Hello everyone, it's Ray Andrews again and here I go with a splashing surf over rocks. Just an action packed surf scene. I'm using Archer's cold press paper and I sketch out a rough outline in a 2B pencil first just to give me an, uh, an, a guide with the rocks. Now I'm using the group of colours that I listed at the beginning of this video this one, uh, this mix of colours is the cobalt blue with the permanent rose. And I'm very aware, when, especially with a surf scene, of leaving white of the paper. And I think it's good for you to understand that your whites are the passageways. They're the escape routes for your viewer. And they're very important. If you take them out, Sometimes your viewer just gets locked into the picture and won't uh, travel through it. So let's just work with the idea of leaving quite a bit of white here and there. Here I've just used the same mix of colours but a little deeper in value. And I'm trying to make the wave look more of an impact. And obviously that's done with contrast. So I've put some darker values right near it. Now I'm using a wet tissue or paper towel, just wet the end of it and I just blot out some areas which will give me a softer version of waves. Now I have cheated a little bit on the colours I listed because I did add ultramarine blue to the burnt sienna for some of this rock area. My other colours in the rocks are a mixture of sap green, quin coral, burnt sienna and French ultramarine blue. Now before I go any further with that little area, I rubbed out the pencil mark because that was a passageway and I wanted to keep it that way so the pencil mark was not needed. So continuing through my rock area I just keep adding and subtracting some of the the colour mixes. Uh, the underside of the waves is a mixture of sap green with a little bit of cobalt blue mixed with it. Um, but bringing it all together now starting to tie the two halves of the painting together that quinacrid and coral is my first colour I put down, but look how dark I'm getting with some of the areas within this big fella, this great big rock. You can afford to live a little dangerously with it. You don't have to be too gentle. It's a very dramatic scene and you want it to still appear like there is a lot of drama going on. And that's going to happen with contrast. When you take out some of the uh, wave area, the dark behind that area might need to be reinforced later on, which you'll see me do. So I'm just kind of working my way through, mixing my colours together, taking out some areas and having light and shade within a rock face. Still using my number eight round brush for most of this and just dabbing, putting a spot here and there or a stroke here and there, especially while the page is quite wet, it's going to bleed so it's not going to leave a hard mark for me. And just keep on working your way through. I've still managed to leave little pieces of white here and there, but the main area of, of white is going to be the wave. Now this is a trowel shaped palette knife, a flexible one, and I really only use the first one inch of the, of the knife itself, and I'm scraping back into the, it's a damp paint, it's not sloppy wet paint, otherwise you'll score the paper. But you have to wait till the sheen's just about gone from the top of the paper before you start doing this. And you can use the palette knife, if it's a round one like this, it's gentler on the surface of your paper. So you can use the tip of it as well as the side of it. Now the corner here was already dry. So you noticed I reconstituted it with water before I scraped. 
So now I'm going back in and working on the idea of rocks, giving them a little bit more of that third dimension look by putting in some darks and some middle values to give them some facets. Sometimes there'll be a line left by the palette knife that I can work into and do a bit of negative painting behind it, as in that last rock. It helps me. And uh, you just kind of work your way through it. Try not to have all your rocks looking the same size and importance. Have them all different and varied, some small ones and large ones, some pointy ones, some flatter ones. There is a danger of using one brush to do this sort of thing because you will end up with the same mark. And I often do that and I look at my painting afterwards and notice that I've got all these patches of paint that are about the same shape and mark. So you have to manipulate the brush so that you can change it up a little bit and make it a little more interesting. Now I'm adding a little bit more of the sap green with a tiny bit of the quin coral into it and then sap green with a little bit of the ultramarine blue and that's just for the underside of the wave, the surge of the, the foam. And then I grab my little rigger brush and I start doing some linear facets some little striations that are on rocks that we see at the beach. Just for interest, especially in the foreground areas, it helps to uh, guide the eye and your viewer will always travel wherever there's line implied. So be careful about where you put the line. You're trying to guide their eye to that wave. Soften some of the lines back a little bit. I'm still using my rigger brush when I do this and reinforce, I'm just reinforcing a little bit here and there with my darks. These little marks I didn't like so I've taken a couple of those out with my little small brush. Now I've decided to finish it off with some white gouache and this is a Winsor & Newton product and I'm using my dagger brush to apply this and the tip of my finger. Some gouache uh, can dry with a slight, slight sheen to it, so be aware of that. And by nudging it with the finger, it tends to flatten it out and make it become one with the surface of your page. It's just little touches. You don't want to have too much of it, but it just helps augment the, uh, the white areas. And I'm almost at the finish of this now, so I think I'm going to love you and leave you. I put that little area in in the back there just because that steep line was worrying me. But thank you for watching and please visit again. Oh and I forgot I love you to subscribe and leave a comment.